Great to have you back here on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. A very interesting conversation this morning on Off the Press with uh, Mr. Chris Wandu. Yes. And now we move to telling you things that happened on this day in history many, many years ago. I'm going back to the year 1997, and it is a story about one of the greatest sportsmen in history. He is also one of the greatest you know, African sports um, um, men in history, Tiger Woods. It was on this day that he, um, of course, win, uh, won his uh, Masters tournament for the first time. April 13, 1997, he was 21 years old at that time, and he won the prestigious Masters tournament by a record 12 strokes in Augusta, Georgia. It was his first victory in one of golf's uh, four major championships, uh, which are the US Open, the British Open, the PGA Championship, and the Masters. And of course, it was also the greatest performance by a professional golfer in more than a century. It also made him at that time the youngest golfer by two years to win the Masters and the first person of Asian or African heritage to win a major. He became the youngest player ever to win the US Junior Amateur Championship also. And in 1992 and 1993, he captured the Junior Amateur uh, titles. In 1994, he accepted a scholarship to attend uh, Stanford University. 18 years at that time, making history. Um, in 1996, he won the Collegiate title and he was celebrated by the magazine Sports Illustrated as Sportsman of the Year. Over time, he has won 15 uh, professional major golf championships. Only second, I think the next person after him um, has um, 18. Um, and so I think he still has some time to, you know, add to that list of, you know, more golf championships. Mm. Um, 2021 has been a little rough for him with the right. little with accident the, the that he had. It's not even little. It was, it was, well, was, well, it was big. Yeah, well, big accident. Big. And, you know, you can also take away, you know, we spoke yesterday about a little bit of controversy in, you know, um, popular, you know, person's um, yeah. lives. Um, there's also a time when he went through a divorce, um, had a, a crisis in his marriage because he... Alleged, well, he had extramarital, it's not allegedly now. He had extramarital affairs with um, you know, certain yeah, people you were gonna, that he used to watch on the screen. You were going to paint that over. <laughs> <laughs> and so then anyway. his career went downhill, and then he went right over again. That is I a mean, phenomenal part of it. You see this thing about Tiger Woods, I watched a documentary about him, and it all started with his father, just like the Williams sisters. Mm -hmm. His father, it, it, it's as if the father put the dream in him. And then when he began to succeed, the blacks were beginning to look at him like a god. They even wanted him to come out in, in some form of leadership role. And he said, no, I'm not cut out for all of it, it also, yes, it, but it also wasn't easy for him. It wasn't, uh, Because no. of the society that yeah, he lived in. You know, there was also the racism, um, you know, um, uh, racist attacks and racist slurs that were thrown at him um, in the you know, start of his career. But, you know, he was able to, you know, just like you also mentioned, the Williams sisters, he was able to survive all of that pressure mm -hmm. and um, emerge as one of the most successful at the time. He was, I think, the richest and highest paid, um, you know, sportsman in yes, the world. Yes, yeah. Um, and you know, that has been his story. In, you know, in the midst of all the controversy and all the, you know, troubles here and there, mm. still, you know, has more things to celebrate than the things uh, to... Uh, awesome to story, if you ask me. Uh, Tiger is a classic example of, you know, um, once there is hope, right, anything can happen. Yeah. I mean, he never gives up. Absolutely not. It's a good thing. And this thing about the ebb and flow of life, Osagi just gave us a very, very juicy story about uh, Tiger Woods. So, but I'm going to do an about turn. Mm. We'll talk about the Hadassah Medical Convoy Massacre. This is not a, a story that puts a smile on your face. Now, the Hadassah Convoy Massacre took place on the 13th of April, 1948, when a convoy escorted by Haganah Militia uh, bringing medical and military supplies and personnel to Hadassah Hospital on Mount Scopus, Jerusalem, was ambushed by Arab forces. 78 Jewish doctors, nurses, students, patients, faculty members, and Haganah fighters, and one British uh, soldier were all killed in the attack. Also, dozens of unidentified bodies burnt beyond recognition were buried in a mass grave in the uh, Sanhedria uh, Cemetery. The Jewish agency claimed that the massacre was a gross violation of international humanitarian law and demanded action be taken against a breach of the Geneva Conventions. Now, 
Here's the catch. The Arabs claimed they had attacked a military formation that all members of the convoy had engaged in combat and that it had been impossible to distinguish combatants from civilians. Isn't this heartbreaking? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and this is what, in 1948, mm -hmm. I believe? Um, and so it, 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 for me, I'm just imagining that some of the things that we're talking about today now the crisis, the you know, the um, you know, tribal, religious, and you know, terrorism conversations that we're having today, like the one that start, happened in Benue that we talked about. Yeah, yeah. It didn't start, you know, in, in the year two thousands. You know, as far back as nineteen forty eight. You know, we've been dealing with things like this, mm -hmm. um, and it's a really, really sad um, um, story to tell. You mm -hmm. know, that these were all medical workers um, on their way to um, site, and of course, doing humanitarian work that lost their lives in such a gruesome manner. It is. Um, it's, it's, it's really sad. There's, there's, there's no way else to see this or to have this conversation without feeling bad for, for them. Yeah. And living for work that morning, doing what they needed to do. And, and you know, over time, we've also continued to talk about protecting humanitarian workers, you right. know, the Red Cross Society, um, MSF, and, and, the, and the likes. You know, mm -hmm. even here in Nigeria, if you remember um, um, a nurse, I think, who was kidnapped a couple of years ago by the Boko Haram in uh, Borno, um, um, I'm not sure what state, it should be Borno State. In the North um, In North, yes. Um, that's a, another example, you know, of how humanitarian workers and aid workers have also um, suffered greatly, mm -hmm. um, you know, in the front line of these wars, simply by putting their lives at risk, you know, to, to be at, um, at um, service. You basically serve I just hope that one day there'll be a society without strife, without wars. Not very likely, but not likely. nice to see you hope. <laughs> 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 but anyway, that's all we have for you today in uh, history. I went back to the year 1997, and of course, she took us back to 2013. Um, it's a day in history on the 13th of April, and um, that's all we have. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, our first major conversation for today, we're moving to the Southwest, where the PDP's Congress just took place, and a winner was declared. Just 13 votes separating the both of them that contested uh, in that election, and also two political giants, um, you know, reconnected, reunited, and of course, uh, spoke in the good of the party and not themselves. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're talking about former Ikit State Governor and the Governor of Oyo State, Chief yeah. Makinde, um, Ayodili Fayashi, who I mentioned earlier. We'll talk about that after the short break.